All right, guys, so welcome to this Feel Your Damn Muscle Flow. We're going to start on the ground like a baby, and we're going to feel quite a difference in our awareness of our lower back, our pelvis, all of these wonderful things that are going to get us really solid to go in connecting and getting better resting positions and also feeling the right muscles when we move. Remember, this is part of that mind-body connection aspect of the WAD Forever formula, and this is also going to help us over time change to not having such repetitive postures while we rest, and that's going to lead to also increasing movement frequency. It all works out, y'all. So what we're going to do, we're just going to simply lie down on the back. Come on, camera, follow me. Ooh. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. So here's what we're going to do. Just tuck the knees in. Let the head be lifted. Okay? So I'm starting just pulling my knees into my chest, kind of letting them go side to side. I can have my hands behind my head if I want to let it relax a little bit. And I'm just kind of taking note of my pelvis. Does one side feel like it's off the ground? Is my lower back glued to the ground? Just side to side here. Now what I'm going to do is relax the head, let the feet drop, take my hands. I'm going to place them right on the front of my pelvis bones, my ASIS. Okay, and what I want to do is just make sure I have my hips tucked, which is relatively easy if your lower back's touching the ground fully, right? No space here. Good to go. But now I want you to make sure that those are even, right? I have been doing this for a while, so it's a little bit easier for me to tell, but if you need to, just take a look. It looks like my right hand is higher than my left, so I have to shift my hips a little bit. Now it feels much more even. So do whatever shift you need. Okay, and if you need to, take a look at the hip dance video on, uh, on the YouTube to kind of see what I mean. And now what we're going to do is with the lower back glued to the ground, we're just going to start to push the hips out to the side, push the knees, excuse me, out to the side, right? I'm not letting my ankle roll too much, but I'm actively pressing out. I feel a little bit of tension in my glutes. Ooh, left glute cramp. Oh. Okay, if you cramp, just come out of it, come back up. Make sure the hips are even. Push out, right? I'm not just relaxed and falling. I am actively pushing out. If my hands were resisting, I'd be pressing against it. Come back in and press out. Again, hand staying on the hips, make sure it stays even. Let's start to lift the head, tuck the knees up. Okay, and now we're gonna go back to our twist. Now we're again more aware of our hips. Good. Now what we're gonna end up doing is getting a little bit of an uneven movement here. So I'm gonna drive my right knee up as high as it will go. Drive my left knee up as high as it will go. My head shifts over the left when I do this. Now it shifts over the right. Starting to feel some core shift over the left. Shift over the right. Let's add in a little bit of a twist. You can use your hands if you need. De-grip if you like. Keeping that chin tucked to not feel the back of the neck. Three, two, one. Feet back to the floor, hands back on the hips, drive the knees wide. I feel a nice bit of hip tension and glute tension when I do this. Don't, have, don't let the feet be too rotated outward. You won't feel it correctly, so toes are still pointed forward, even though the outside blade is where the pressure is going through the feet. Right, My inside arch isn't down. Pressing apart. Pressing apart. Now let's go to a little bit of angry baby. So again, hands on hips. Tuck in, making sure my pelvis is even. An easy way to tell with the knees up is I can see that this knee is closer to me this one, my right one, then my left. But the moment I even out my pelvis, feels weird, but the knees are even. They're compressed evenly towards me. Now, let's grab the feet. Keeping that even pelvis, begin to aggressively straighten the legs and try and crunch into the thighs. So the thighs stay glued to the core as we try and straighten. Keeping that even pelvis, feeling quite a bit of a stretch in my hamstrings, activation in my core. Just take a couple deep breaths. Core should be getting lit up. Hamstring should be getting a good stretch. I'm driving my heels that way. So I'm trying to straighten my leg. Three, two, one, and relax. Good. Let's just let the neck rest for a second. We're actually going to get into the neck next. A lot of times when we work at a computer or when we're driving frequently, the neck ends up being too forward. So what we're going to do, right, my lower back is glued to the ground. Take my hands on the front of my hip bones. Make sure my hips are even. Once that's there, I can keep them there or relax my hands to the side. Now what I'm going to do, take the back of your neck. Try and get it flush to the ground. So I'm going to push my chin down through. 
I can even like kind of move my head with my hands. And I'm not literally going to get the back of my neck on the ground, but I'm trying to get it as flat as possible. Then I bring the hands to a prayer position, and this kind of makes me feel just a little bit of a stretching sensation in the back of my neck. Let's take a couple deep breaths here. Full breath in. Exhale. Blown out a candle. We're going to do five of these. Let's get four more. Breathe in. Exhale. Breathe in. Exhale. Breathe in. Exhale. Take one more. Here we go. Breathe in. And exhale. From here, without losing the position we feel in the back of the neck, chin pulled down and through. Let's go. Prayer hands in the middle. Keep the chin down. Feel tension in the front of the neck. Now we're going to lift the head. Oh, nice neck adjustment. Oh, feel the front of my neck. Oh, my God. So I'm feeling the front of my neck getting a contraction. I don't feel the back of my neck, and I'm shaking, but I don't feel the back of my neck because I'm engaging the front, the part that's usually very weak and too lengthened. I'm typing at a computer, looking down at our phone, or at a computer screen, or while we're driving. Stay here. I know it's lit up. Oh, my God. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Okay, we're going to stay here because now we're going to get into some shoulder movement, right? This is for the hips. This is for the spine. This is also going to be for the shoulders. Getting it nice and fluid. We want our shoulder blades to rotate. So the next thing that we're going to do, feet stay on the ground. Let's go ahead and set the neck again, same way we just did. We're going to crunch up. Hands are covering one another. And I'm going to think about keeping my arms close. I'm going to be scooping my armpit up and overhead. Okay, I'm not shrugging. So hands are over one another. We're going to act like we're combing the hair. Scoop, scoop, scoop. I'm pushing out and overhead. Scoop, scoop, scoop. Comb the hair. Hands have gotten as far as back as they can. Pinch the shoulder blades together. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Come back. We comb the hair. Wash the face. Good. Pinch the shoulders again. Scoop up and over. Doing five of these. Pinch. Come back up and over. Good. We're trying to feel tension a little bit through our armpit when we do this first scoop here. Here's three. So that means our serratus is firing. Pinch. If you're not feeling it, what I want you to do is at the starting position, think about taking the collarbones, pushing them down in the direction of the hips. Scoop, scoop, scoop. Push the collarbones down. Scoop, scoop, scoop. Here's three or four, excuse me. Pinch. Up and over. Core's on fire. Last one. Up. Pinch. Up and over. And relax. Now what we're going to do is go to a kneeling position. Come through. I'm going to put my hips just in front of my knees. We're going to do some baby rock drops. So knees together, feet together, toes pointed back creating that short side of the core on the left and lengthening the right. We're going to have the hand up too, so it's going to be degrip. Remember, surfer bro, cross pointer ring over middle. So drop the hip to the right, push that elbow towards the hip, come back, staying on the side. Drop that hip to the right, push the shoulder down towards the hip. There's two. We have five per side. There's three, getting a nice stretch on the right side of my hip and feeling the left lat and the left core. There's four. And... Five. Switch. We're only doing this for the first five, and then we're going to do it regular. Hip drops to the side. Find that lat. Keeping that left hand strong through the ground. There's two. There's three. Good. Controlling the breath. Four. And five. Now hands back. We're going to be alternating. Drop the hips to the side. Feel that left core. Nice stretch. Good switch. 10 total, so 20 combining everything. Here we go. Here's three, four. Create that short side on the right, right rib to right hip. Here's five, left rib to left hip. Six, seven, eight. Hips should be getting nice and loose here. Nine, last one, and 10. Here, just rock back for a second, hang out, open it up. Good. From here, we're going to sit back 
kneeling on our shins. If this is a little bit intense, you can have your toes tucked. That's fine. We're going to need a degrip for this. We're going to be going up and over, getting some upper back rotations here. So, degrip on both hands. Left hand, take your pinky and your palm, put it to your spine. Next, right thumb, pinching back that right shoulder, bringing it in. Now we're going to rotate to the arm that's up elevated overhead. So first thing, get that elbow as high as it will go without flaring the ribs. And then drive the left shoulder back. Think more about the shoulder pinching and rotating your spine than moving your elbow backwards. Go, 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 go. That's as far as I got. Oh, God, come back to the middle. Breathe in. Exhale. Good. If you feel your trap, it just means we're shrugged too much. So push that collarbone down. Rotate. Oh, three. Four. Five and switch. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. Here we go. Shoulders down, right? Pushing this collarbone down on the right hand side. D grip, rotate. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, back to the left. Okay, keep that collarbone down. If the elbow can't go up as high because you feel the trap, that's fine. Maybe you have to be here. I'll start lower too. Rotate. Oh, much better. Breathe in. Exhale. Remember, we're just trying to improve our mind-body connection. This is not a test. We're exploring. You're not failing. You're learning. There's three. Last two. Last one, and switch, inhale, exhale, and we really drive that shoulder blade back on the right side, it's down and back, and then we're rotating that spine, I'm feeling quite a bit of my upper back, down back, breathe in, exhale, breathe in, exhale, Breathe in, exhale, and relax, shake it out. If the ankles are feeling it, right, lean forward, get a little pitter-patter going. Loosen it up, loosen it up. Good. We're now going to go into our lunge position. My left leg is up, right foot, toes are tucked, hands on pelvis. Ah, here we go. Let's get that posterior tilt, tucking the tailbone. Okay, it's all right if the uh, hips aren't too even on this. We just don't want a crazy discrepancy. You can see that if I really drop my right hip, I'm kind of super crooked here. But if I make it as even as I can with a pelvis tuck, right, it's a little bit more even. It's not perfect, but I'm a little bit more stacked. So again, pelvis is tucked. Push your big toe through the ground on this back foot right here. Because of the tailbone tuck, you should actually feel this back leg's quad, this one, really starting to fire. So push it through the ground like you're trying to kick, but you're not letting yourself lift. Hold for three, two, one. Oh my God, that's a burn. And push through the ground, tailbone tuck. Three, two, one. We got two more of these, four per side. And push the foot through the ground. Three, two, one. Rest, and one more. Push the foot through the ground. Three, two, one, and rest. Good, switch, tailbone is tucked. Again, assess the hips. This side's harder for me, so I really have to tuck, and then I really have to kind of drop my right hip to make it more even. So, again, push the toe through the ground. Ready, here we go. Three, two, one. Wow, this side is much weaker. Here we go, press. Three, two, one. Ooh, does it feel good. Keep that tailbone tucked, ready, and press. Three, two, one, and rest. Here we go, and press. Three two, one, and rest, come back out of it, good, now what we're going to do, right, tailbone tuck, neutral pelvis, push forward as much as you can, without losing that posterior tilt, for me that's here, for you that might be further, we're going to lift and hover for 10, so push that back foot through the ground, both feet will then lift, so push through the ground, ready, and lift, three, four, or two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax. We got another one. Three, two, one. Tailbone tuck, lift. One, two, three. Pushing the front foot through the ground as well. Six, seven, eight, nine, and relax. Let's switch. Tailbone tuck. Push through the ground. All right, we're going to lift. Ready? And up. One, two, three, four. I'm shaking. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Relax. Three, two, one, and lift. Whoop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Down. Relax. Take a second. Shake it out. Woo. All right. We're going to have another hip piece in here. We're going to tie in the lat. Lat connects to the hip. This is important. So now we're going to be in that same position we were just in. We're going to have a D grip. We're going to be head over that front leg. We're going to be taking that shoulder and compressing it down towards the hip. Don't worry about how far back the elbow goes because that's going to push the shoulder forward. Think more about how much the elbow can go down and then slowly across towards the mid back. So left leg is back forward. D grip on both hands. Left leg's in front, so left palm is up. Here, head over foot. Feel that short side, long side. Hips feel posterior tilt. Push that shoulder down. Rotate a little bit. Here we go. Two hovers for 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Get that lat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good. Three, two, one. One and up. One, two, three. Push that shoulder down. Four, five, six, seven. Feel that lat. Nine, ten. Woo! All right. Last one. Here we go. Then we're going to do just a little bit of calm breathing to finish. Okay, palm up, palm down. Here we go. Shoulder down. Up. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax for a second. Here we go. Ready? Tailbone tuck. One, two, three, four. Shoulder down. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and relax. Let's make our way to our back. Finish with just a little bit of breath awareness. All right, so. Take the hands, two of them, right? Guns, pew, pew, pew. So, two fingers, just below the belly button. Other two fingers, below the rib, but above the hip, right on the side. Go ahead and gently push in. That's where we're trying to breathe into, side body, lower body. And let's just start taking deep breaths. Go ahead and breathe in. Exhale. Feel that expansion on the side body as well. Breathe in. Exhale. Breathe in. Exhale. Three more. Breathe in. Exhale. Breathe in. Exhale. Good. Let's get one more. You can go ahead and continue if this feels good. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that flow. Again, it should have made you a little bit more aware of what was going on with your pelvis, with your spine. Remember, we're trying to do this type of action because it's going to help us improve our mind-body connection because we're focusing on our feel. That way we can lift the heavier weights we want. We can do the more running we want. We can do the more specific sports we want. And also, it's helping us change our patterns. We're doing a lot of rotation. We do side-to-side -side movements in these flows. We do a lot of different aspects that we might not do as often um, in our regular movement practices. Or we might be doing it in our movement practice, but here it gives us an opportunity to explore it deeper and really focus on it because there's no external goal other than something that's internal of exploring our body more, which we're never going to achieve a happy point with that per se in the sense of we're never going to wake up one day and go, I've achieved my best body awareness ever right? 
it's not, it doesn't work like that. So continue to explore your health. I hope you enjoyed this Philia Dan Muscle Flow.